Welcome back to our series Backgammon Basics here on Drag the Bar. I'm Bill Roberti, your instructor for the series. Now last time in episode one we covered all the rules. How to set up the pieces, how to move the checkers according to the throws of the dice, how to hit checkers, how to make points, how to bear off, and finally how to use the doubling cube. Now in episode two I'm going to take you through a real game from start to finish so you can get a feel for what the players are trying to do. We'll start to talk about some of the strategy and tactics of backgammon so you'll be able to understand not only what the players are doing but why they're doing it. By the end of this episode you should have a pretty good feel for what a game looks like and how you should be thinking as a game moves from the opening to the middle game to the ending and finally the bear off. Okay, let's get started. Okay, here's our backgammon board in the starting position. And Black actually wins the opening roll with a roll of a 4 and a 3. Black threw a 4, White threw a 3. So the opening roll goes to Black and his move is a 4-3. Now, let's take a look at what he actually plays and then we'll look at a couple of alternatives that he might have played. What he really did was he moved one checker from his midpoint down four pips, one, two, three, four, and put it there. And then he moved a second checker from his midpoint three pips, one, two, and three. So his checkers went from the 13 point down to the nine and the 10. Now, at first glance, that might look like a pretty daring play. He's leaving two blots, so there are gonna be a, a lot of rolls where white can hit next turn. Uh, White can hit if he rolls an 8, uh, either 6-2 or 5-3, and he'll hit from the 1 point to the 9 point. Or he can hit with a 9. Uh, again, a roll like 6-3 or 5-4 can come from the 1 point and hit the blot on the 10 point. So White's going to have a few numbers that will actually hit these blots. And that's a risk that Black is taking. But what he's getting in return is he's creating a lot of rolls on the dice that are going to make key blocking points next turn. Notice that he has rolls like 3-1 and 4-1 and 5-1 that will allow him to make the 5 point. He's got rolls like 4-2, 5-2, 6-2 that would allow him to make the 4 point. By the same token, he's got some rolls that will make the bar point. He's got rolls that will make the 3 point. So he's now set up, if he doesn't get hit, to make one of these key blocking points that he's trying to make in the early game on the next turn. And although White has a few hits, he doesn't really, he's not a favorite to hit by any means. He's really got about 11 out of, out of his 36 numbers that will hit one of these blots. Now he didn't have to do this. Let's, let's take a look at a couple of other ways he could have played the opening roll. One thing he could have done is to move a checker from the midpoint four spaces and then keep that same checker going with his last roll of a three, and it would end up here on the six point. And by the way, when you have more than five checkers on a point in our little diagram here, uh, that's indicated by a number up here. So that six represents a sixth checker that's sitting on the six point here for black. Now this play is completely safe. It doesn't leave any blots. There's no risk involved in this. Uh, at least no obvious risk. But the downside to this play is that Black has not created any new ways to make more points. He's got the same points he had to start the game and he hasn't got any builders in position to make new points. So we don't like plays like that. We don't, uh, don't want to do things that, uh, that leave us in the opening stage of the game in a position that's that weak. Another thing he could have tried would be a more defensive play. He could have taken one of his back checkers on the 24 point and moved that four pips. And then let's say he used the three to bring down a checker from the midpoint to the 10 point. That's a perfectly okay move too, and that's a move that's more oriented toward defense. What Black is trying to do here is to quickly make the anchor here on the 20, po 20, on the 20 point by throwing a four next turn. And then once he has that anchor, it becomes almost impossible for white to construct a blocking position against black's back men. So that's another good play, perfectly acceptable. But what he chose to do was the most aggressive play. He brought down two builders into his outer board, created blots, 
but in, at the same time he created a lot of ways that he can improve his position next turn. Okay, now it's White's turn, and this time White throws a 3 and a 2 for his opening move. And what he elects to do is to move a checker from his midpoint and put it here on the 8 point. Now here he's making the sort of mistake that Black avoided on his opening turn. This play is just too safe and too passive for the early part of the game. Both sides need to be trying to make key points, either key blocking points or key anchors that prevent you from being blocked. And what White should have done with this turn is to just take two checkers off his midpoint and sort of emulate what Black did. Put one checker with the three down here on the 15 point and put the second checker using the two down here on the 14 point. And by doing that, again, White would be taking a small risk that he could get hit. But in return for that small risk, White now generates a lot of different rolls on his next turn that will help him make blocking points. And that's really the story of the early part of the game. You're trying to continually make points that either block in your opponent, prevent your opponent from blocking you in, or, if you can, hit some of the blots that are left behind. And White's actual play, moving a checker from the 12 down to the 17 point, doesn't really help in any of those goals. It's completely safe, but it's also completely passive, and that's not a good way to play. Okay, now it's Black's turn, and Black rolls a 5-1 for his roll. And in a sense, this now pays off the risk that he took on the opening roll. This is a great shot, and here's how he plays it. He takes the checker on the 10 point and moves that 5 pips forward to the 5 point, like that. And then he takes one of the checkers on the 6 point and moves that a single pip. And as a result, Black makes his 5 point. He puts two checkers there, and as we saw in our first lesson, once you have two checkers on a point, you own that point. It belongs to you, and your opponent can't move there. So Black, by this roll, has, start, has taken possession of another point that helps him block in these two white checkers back here on the one point. All right, now it's White's turn again, and White rolls a five and a two, which is not a great shot for White. It doesn't allow him to make any new points. And of course, that's really one of the problems in backgammon is that from the starting position, you don't have a lot of rolls that will make new points naturally. That's why in the early stages of the game, people will take small risks in order to try to generate more rolls for themselves that play well. This is a bit of a mediocre roll, and White does more or less the best he can with it. He moves two more checkers off his midpoint, putting one on the 17 point, and with the two, he places the other one on the 14 point. He's not in a great position, but with that roll, there really wasn't too much that he could do. Okay, now we're back on black to roll, and this time black rolls a 4-1. Now, that's not a really powerful looking number, but it turns out that black can do some nice things with it. First of all, with the 4, he's going to move a checker from his midpoint, 1, 2, 3, 4, and make the 9 point. That gives him yet another point. And finally, with the ace, he's going to move one of these checkers from the six point to the five point. Now, I want you to take a look at this position and notice how the small risk that Black took on the opening roll has really paid off for him. While White hasn't really made any progress yet, Black has made two new points. He's made the five point, he's made the nine point, and he's also made, if you'll notice, four points out of five. He's got the five, six, eight, and nine points all made. So what he's got here is the start of what we call a prime, which is a series of consecutive blocking points that really keep your opponent hemmed in. Black is well on his way to being able to make a prime in one of the upcoming rolls because not only has he made new points, but he's also created what we call builders to make still more points. So Black's doing really well here. He's, he's gotten off to a very nice advantage in the early part of the game. And White's going to have to do some work to catch up. Okay, now it's White's turn again. And White, on his part, rolls a pretty good number. He rolls a 6-1. 
and unfortunately he misplays it. Now he notice that he's got a couple of choices with a 6-1. Uh, one choice is the play that he actually makes. He takes a checker from the 12, moves it down to the 18, and then he takes one of the checkers from the 17 and uses that to make the 18 point. Now that makes a new point, although it does give up the midpoint, and it creates a block of three points in a row. So that at first looks like a pretty good way to play the number, but now let's take a look at something he could have done that was a little better. He could have taken the checker from the 14 point, moved that six pips down to the 20, and then used a checker from the 19 to play with the ace and actually make the 20 point. There's a couple of reasons this is better. First of all, uh, it is like the other play. It does make another point and it does make a blocking point, but it's got uh, two advantages over the play that White originally chose. First of all, it doesn't leave any blots around the board, and that's very important. The play that White actually made left a blot, if you remember, out here on the 12 point. The second reason the play is good is because the, f the 20 point, or White's 5 point really, if you think of it that way, is a more important point than the 18 point. The reason it's more important is because it's in White's inner board. And when you make points in your inner board, you accomplish a couple of things. You not only make a good point, but you make a point which will help to keep your opponent on the bar if you ever hit a shot later in the game. Remember that when you get sent to the bar, you have to re-enter in your opponent's inner board before you can do anything else. And the more points White makes in his inner board, the harder it would be for black to enter there if black ever gets hit later on. So this is really a better way to play the number than the way that white actually chose, which was making the 18 point. So another small mistake for white, and they're starting to add up because black is getting the better game here pretty convincingly. Okay, now it's black's turn, and black rolls a pretty good number, a 3-1. Even though, these, even though he's not throwing large numbers on the dice, black is rolling in such a way that he's able to construct a good position pretty quickly. So let's see what he does here. The ace is pretty simple. Black is going to take one of his checkers from the 13 point, move it one pip, and hit the white blot on the 12 point, and send that, block, that blot back to the bar. So he does that. And now that he's put white on the bar, he's going to look around for the best three that he can find. Now, he's got a few good threes he can play in this position. He could play, for instance, 13 down to 10. That would add another builder to the four point. That would be a good thing to do. He could safety the blot on the 12 and put it on the nine point. That's not a bad play. But instead, remembering that he wants to try to keep things going on both sides of the board, he uses the opportunity to take one of the checkers on the 24 point and move it up three pips to the 21 point. And what Black is trying to do here is to simply prevent himself from getting blocked in by White's position in the near future. So he moves the checker up. Now that checker is ready either to hop into the outfield next turn and get away, or if Black rolls a three next time, he can move the checker from the 24 up to the 21 and make what we've called an anchor, which will be a good defensive bulwark. So that's a very good way to play the 3-1. He hits a white blot, and in addition, he splits his back bend, gets ready to either make an anchor or run away. Okay, now it's white's turn again, and white is now starting to get in a little trouble. Not only is he behind in the race, uh, he hasn't really got a whole lot in the way of a good blocking position, but in addition, he's got to enter from the bar before he does anything else. Now, fortunately for him, he rolls a pretty good number. He rolls a 3-2, uh, and the reason that's a good number, first of all, is just because it gets his checker in. Notice that if White had rolled numbers containing a 6 or a 5, he would have had to stay out because Black owns the 6 point and Black also owns the 5 point. So in order to get in, White had to roll either a 1, 2, 3, or 4 on the dice. Now, he's a pretty big favorite to do that, and in fact, he did. And here's how he plays the 3-2. He's going to take the checker on the bar and use the 3 to bring it in. So it enters 1, 2, it enters on the 3 point. And now with the 2, he's going to actually make that anchor. He's going to take a checker from the 1 point and move it 2 pips up to the 3. 
And all things considered, that's a pretty good result for him. He got the checker in, and he actually managed to get off the anchor back on the one point, which was in danger of getting blocked, and get up here to the three point where he's a little less likely to get blocked in. So all in all, that was a pretty good result for White. Okay, now it's Black's turn. And uh, if you notice, things have been going pretty well for Black. He's made some blocking points. He's hit his opponent and gained ground in the race. He's activated his back men, so he's getting ready to either make an anchor or escape a checker. And in fact, Black decides that things have been going so well that he's not going to roll the dice here at all. Instead, he's going to double the stakes. So he takes the doubling cube from the center, where it represents one unit, and he turns it to two and gives it to White. And now this, in turn, puts the question to White. White now has the following choice. He can either resign the game, give it up, and pay his opponent one unit, which, if they were playing for, let's say, $10 a point, means he'd owe his opponent $10. Or he can elect to keep the cube. He can accept the cube, keep it on his side at 2, and play out the game for double the original stake. So again, if they were playing for, say, $10 a point, uh, with a cube on 2, a single game would now be worth $20, a gammon would be worth $40, and a backgammon would be worth $60. So the stakes are going up if White decides to play, but he does have the option of giving up. Now, in fact, he decides to accept the cube and play on, and in this position, that's a good choice. Uh, the general guideline for accepting doubles is that if you think you have one chance in four of winning the game, you should play on. And the re the, where that comes from, by the way, is the fact that if you resign the game, you lose one point. If you take the double, you're now in a position where if you lose a single game, you lose two points. That's only one additional point. But if White can turn this game around and win it, he'll go from losing one point to winning two points, which is a three-point swing. So he's, in a sense, risking one point to try to win three points. That's a three-to-one payoff. And so if you have one chance in four of winning the position, that's a good deal to make. White decides that, in fact, he's not quite a 3-to-1 underdog, and he elects to play on, and I think that's a good decision. In this position, uh, I don't think White is a 3-to-1 underdog, although he's certainly an underdog, because Black does have the better game here. But White does decide to accept the double, and I think that's a correct decision. Okay, so with the cube now on White's side at 2, uh, it's Black's turn to roll again, and he rolls one of his best numbers, a 6-1. Now, there's actually two very strong ways of playing this number. Uh, one option Black has is to move the checker from the 13 point all the way down to the 7, and then move the checker from the 8 point to the 7 as well, which would make a block of five points in a row. That's very strong, and if he didn't have something else equally good to do, that's what he would play. But he also notices that he can take the checker on the 21 point, move it out seven pips, and hit the white checker on the 14. And Black decides that that's actually his best choice. So he sends the white checker to the bar and moves his back checker from the 21 out to the 14. So once again, Black has hit white and forced white to re-enter from the bar. Okay, now it's white's turn. And white rolls a kind of a mediocre number. He shoots a 5-1. Uh, it's not the worst roll because, indeed, he, he can still get his men in from the bar. Notice that he can't use the 5 to enter because black owns the 5 point, so white can't move there. But he can use the 1 to enter. He can move his checker in off the bar 1 pip and make the 1 point again. Then with the 5, he has to move either a checker on the 19, 18, or 17 points. He elects to, to move one of the checkers on the 19 and hit black on the 24 at the same time. So he sends black to the bar, and he moves a checker 5 from the 19 down to the 24. So for the first time, white has actually managed to hit black, but it's not much of a success because he's only sent black back a single pip. OK, now it's black's turn again. And black shoots and rolls a 5-3, which is not a great number, but it's not a bad number either. 
Uh, he can re-enter pretty easily, and what he elects to do is to re-enter with the 3, putting it on the 22 point, and then use the 5 to pick up one of his blots by moving from the 14 down to the 9. That's a good play. You don't want to have too many blots around the board during the game because there's always a chance your opponent can hit you and something can go wrong. And this way, black is very well situated to fill in the 7 point on his following turn. Notice that he moves, if he rolls numbers that have any combination of a 6, a 5, a 2, and a 1 in them, he can use the combination to fill in the 7 point. That'll give him what we call a prime, which is 5 points in a row. That'll be very, very strong. It'll pretty much lock up the game. So good play there by black. Okay, now white shoots, and he rolls a 3-1. That's not a bad shot for him. Uh, he takes a checker from the 17 down to the 20, and a checker from the 19 down to the 20, and finally he gets to make a point in his inner board. Now, partly, uh, we're pretty far into the game, and, and white is only just now making his first inner board point, but partly that's a function of the fact that he played very conservatively early in the game, he didn't generate a lot of numbers that made good points for him, and as a result, his ability to make his inner board up has been delayed until now. And now it's Black's turn. He shoots and he rolls a 6-1, which is one of his best shots. Now he could use this number to escape his back checker. He could run the 22 out to the 16 and maybe keep it going to the 15. That's not a terrible play, but he notices he can do something much better with it. He moves the checker from the 13 point down to the 7, and then he moves a checker from the 8 point to the 7, and finally he completes the prime that he's been working on these last few turns. He makes five points in a row. And now it's going to be very, very hard for White to ever escape these back checkers. Uh, he needs to get them first to the 4 point, then out to the 10 point with a 6. Uh, there aren't many rolls that do that, and it's just not likely that White's ever going to be able to get out of this trap that he's in. So huge advantage now to Black. If the cube were still in the middle, Black would double a position like this and White would have to give up. But as it is, White is Black doubled at a good time before he made a crushing position. White accepted, and now White's going to have to play this game out to the finish. So now it's White's turn. And white rolls a 4-2. And this roll gives white a couple of choices, and unfortunately he makes the weaker choice. What he should do here is play the 4 from the 17 point to the 21, and then use the 2 to go from the 19 to the 21, and make a block of his own. It wouldn't be enough to turn the game around, because it's not that hard for black to extract his last checker. All he has to do is roll a 6 at some point in the next few turns, uh, but that would at least give White a little bit better chance. Uh, instead, he gets distracted by the fact that he can hit a blot and cover a point at the same time. So what he does is he moves a checker from the 18 point four pips to the 22, hitting black, and then keeps that checker going on to the 24. So the result looks like this. White goes to there hitting, and then goes to there and makes the 24 point. Black was such a big favorite in a position that this isn't really a serious error for White because he's probably going to lose the game anyway, but he should have used the play to make another blocking point. Okay, Black is now on the bar. He's got to come in before he does anything else. Rolls the dice and rolls a 3-1. That's a good shot. Notice that he needed to roll a 2, a 3, or a 4 in order to get in. So a 3-1 is just fine. He takes the blot from the bar, moves it in three pips to the 22 point. And then with the ace, it doesn't matter too much what he does. He elects to play a checker from the 9 to the 8, and that's perfectly good. Now white now rolls a 5-4. Um, it's not a roll that changes the game very much. At this point, black is a huge favorite to win, but what white does is to move five from the 17 point down to the 22 and then cover it up with a four from the 18 point so he puts black back on the bar uh, but the problem of course is that white doesn't 
White isn't really making any progress in getting his rear checkers out, so it doesn't matter very much as far as Black is concerned whether he's on the bar here or not. Time is on his side, and eventually he's going to be able to get his checker in and out, and then the strength of this prime is going to win the game for him. Okay, Black now rolls from the bar. He rolls a 2-2. Uh, notice that as White's board gets better, there are fewer and fewer numbers that will actually enter your checkers. In this case, Black needed uh, a dice roll that had either a 2 or a 4 on it in order to get in. So 2-2 two -two is a very good shot. Um, now remember, when you roll a double, you get to play the number four times. So Black uses his first deuce to enter on the 23 point. And then his second deuce, he plays from 6 down to 4. And with his third deuce, he goes from 8 to 6. And with his fourth deuce, he goes from six down to four. And now he's made what's called a full prime, a six-point prime. And when you have six points in a row, there's no way your opponent can escape the trap because there aren't any numbers on the dice bigger than a six. And notice that no matter what numbers white rolls, the furthest these checkers could go is out to the nine, and the nine is blocked as well as all the other points. So these checkers are fully and officially trapped. And White isn't going to be able to get them out until at some point in the future Black actually dismantles this prime. So this is a big, big edge for Black. He's now a huge favorite to win the game, and he's now entitled to really start thinking about winning a gammon. Okay, now it's White's turn, and White rolls 6-6. Six, six. Now, normally in a game, 6-6 six, six is, a, is a very powerful number because it you get to play a roll of six four times. That means you move a total of 24 pips. So if you're in any kind of a racing game, 6-6 uh, six, six is your best friend. However, here, unfortunately, since white is trapped, 6-6 six, six can't get him out, and therefore the roll doesn't help him very much. In fact, it's completely forced. He only actually has two ways to play a six. So he gets to play two sixes, and then he has to forfeit the other two. And what he's going to do is just move the two checkers from the 17 point down to the 23, filling in that point and putting black up on the bar. And the position afterwards looks like this. Now, at first glance, you might think, well, that's pretty good. He's got a five-point board. Black is on the bar. Black can only re-enter if he rolls a four. So black may stay out for quite a while. And you're right, if, if that would be very good if white could move these checkers. But since these checkers here are stuck in black's board and can't get out, it's really just a matter of time before Black eventually rolls a four, gets in, and gets out. Really, Black here has nothing to worry about. So now Black finds himself on the bar. Notice that he needs exactly a four to come in. No other number will work. And he rolls the dice and rolls a six-three. Well, the six points blocked because White owns that. The three point is blocked because White owns that. So Black has to stay on the bar. He can't come in. And now it's White's turn. White rolls a 5-4. And notice that for White, this is the beginning of the end. Uh, although he's made up a nice, strong five-point board that can keep Black on the bar, unfortunately, he has to keep moving his checkers. The only way that White can play a five is to move a checker from his six-point down to his one-point. And he's got a couple of ways to move a four, but it doesn't really matter. Either way, he has to break one of these two high points. Uh, he chooses to play a checker off the 19 point, which is his 6 point, and move it down to the 2. So because his four remaining checkers over here are completely trapped and can't escape, there's no alternative to just slowly dismantling this board that he worked so hard to set up. Now Black shoots, and he throws a 5-4 himself which is going to let him enter now because the four point is open so he can use the four to come in on what we call the 21 point. And now he looks around for the best five to play and notice he really has his choice of good moves here. He could take that checker and keep it going out here to the 16 point uh, or he could just pick up the checker on the 12, move it into the seven. He elects to do the latter. He plays 12 to seven and the reason for that is that what he's trying to do next is actually make his two point. Once black makes the two point and brings the last checker around the board, then he'll start to take his prime down 
at which point White will be able to get out, although it won't mean much for him in terms of winning the game. And now it's White's turn. This time White rolls a 4-3. And again, he has to continue the process of dismantling these points in his board because that's the only way he can play 4s and 3s. With the 3, he elects to play from 19 to 22. And then with the 4, he's going to play a checker off the 20 down to the 24 point. So he's played his whole roll. Unfortunately, he's now left a shot. So if black rolls a 1 next turn, he can actually hit that blot and send a fifth man back behind his prime. And now black shoots, and black rolls double ones, which is actually a very good shot for him. Uh, now black certainly wants to hit this blot, so he plays his first ace from 21 to 20, hitting the white blot there. Then he plays two more aces to keep this checker going out to the 18, and with the last ace he plays 7 to 6. Now at this stage of the game, Black is not worried about winning. Winning the game here should be very, very easy. Uh, White has a lot of men back, he's very, very far behind in the race, and in addition, if later on in the game White somehow manages to hit a shot that Black leaves, uh, it's not going to do him much good because his board has already been destroyed and Black will easily enter on these high points. So from Black's point of view, winning the game is pretty much locked up. Right now the fight is over the question of whether Black will win a gammon or not. White's going to do everything he can to try to save a gammon. Black's going to try to win a gammon. Remember, with the cube on two, a gammon's worth four points. So winning a gammon is a big deal, and that's really what the players are fighting about. Now white rolls a 6-1, and the 1 at least enables his checker to come in off the bar and enter here on the 1 point. The 6 unfortunately can't be played. The checkers on the 3 point are blocked by the checkers on the 9 point, 6 away, and the checkers here on the 1 point are blocked by the checkers on the 7, seven away, 6 away. So white can't move any of his rear checkers. He has no 6s left, so he has to forfeit that part of his roll. And now it's Black's turn, and Black rolls a 4-1. And at this point, Black makes a very nice play. This is a play that a lot of players would overlook. Uh, the obvious thing for Black to do with this number is to just play this checker on the outside five pips more. So he could move the checker from the 18 to the 14 with the 4, and then from the 14 to the 13. And there's nothing really wrong with that. He's simply bringing that checker around trying to put it on top of his prime, eventually put it in the home board, while at the same time keeping his six-point blockade that keeps white totally trapped. But instead, he notices he can do something a little more clever. He leaves that checker alone, and instead he takes the opportunity to voluntarily move the checkers off the eight-point. So he moves a one to the seven-point, and he moves the four down here to the four-point. And what he's done is he's voluntarily broken his full six-point prime. Now, you might well ask, well, if the prime is keeping white trapped, why does black want to break it when he doesn't have to? And the answer is this is called a trap play. What black is now hoping for is that white next turn will roll some combination containing a five. And notice that if white rolls a five, he's got to move one of the checkers from the three-point out to the eight and then somewhere beyond into the outfield. And once that happens, this anchor on the three-point is broken, and Black can now use his whole army to try to point on that point and push the other white checker further back. And what's more, he might still be able to pick up to hit and send back the other checker that got into the outfield. So, for example, if, if White now rolls a 5-4, he has only one legal play. He's got to play 3-8 to eight, and then 8-12, to 12, and now the checker on the 12 point is vulnerable and the checker on the 3 point is vulnerable. So black could easily roll a number that points on the 3 point. And then later on he might hit this checker in the outfield and white's position, which is already bad, would get a lot worse. So that was a very clever play on black's part. And now that it's white's turn, white doesn't want to roll a 5. White actually doesn't want to allow that to happen, so he's hoping when he rolls that no 5 turns up on the dice. Now, fortunately for him, he shoots and rolls a 4-3, and 
which under the circumstances is a pretty good number because he can't move. And right now, not moving is the best thing that white can do. Now, black shoots, and black this time rolls a 5-4. Now, again, he could bring the outside checker all the way around, but he doesn't have to do that. Uh, and in fact, a better play is to just use some of the builders, the spares that he created last turn, to fill in the last open point in his board. So with the 5, he moves from 7 down to 2, and with the 4, he moves from 6 down to 2. Now he's got his board filled in. He's still hoping, of course, that white rolls a 5 and has to break this point. Uh, but even if white doesn't do that for a while, black can now just take down the 9 point, bring his blot on the 18 around, and get everybody ready to start the bear off. Okay, and now it's white's turn. White shoots. And, uh-oh, he rolls the dreaded 5. So he's got no choice on how to play the 5. He's got to take a checker from the 3-point and move it out to the 8-point. And then the only way he can play a 6 is to keep that checker going all the way over here to the 14-point. So that's a little disaster for White. He's had to break this anchor. Now Black has 6s, 4s, 2s, and 1s to point on it. He's also got 4s to hit out here. So White's in a little more trouble than even he was in before. Okay, now it's Black's turn. He rolls a 4-1. Well, that's a great shot. And he's got a couple of choices with it. Notice that he could, if he wanted to, hit with the 4 here in the outer board. He could go from 18 to 14 and send the White blot back. But there's some small risk if he does that that White will remake this 3-point. And Black has been working hard to get him off that point, so he doesn't want to let him remake it so soon. So instead, he plays the 4-1 by playing the 4 from 7 down to 3, hitting, and putting white on the bar. And then with the 1, he'll play from 4 down to 3, making the point, and basically making a tremendously strong board. And notice now that white can only enter if he rolls a 1. And now it's White's turn. He rolls. He needs a 1, but instead he gets a 6-6. Six, six. He can't move because he, he'd have to re-enter with a 6, and the 6-point is well secured by Black. So White has no choice. He's got to give up his turn. And now the gammon's getting to be a real possibility. Uh, White has three checkers stuck back here on the 24-point. He's got a checker on the bar. And Black, if he rolls a 4 next turn, is going to hit this checker as well. So there's a very good chance from here that White could lose a gam in this game. And now Black shoots. He needs a 4 to hit the White checker. And in fact, he rolls double 4s, which is one of his best possible shots. And first he uses the first 4 to hit White and send that checker back to the bar. The second 4 keeps that checker going. The third 4 brings it all, right, all the way into the 6th point. And with the last 4, he just plays one of the checkers from the 9-point to the 5-point. So he's played his 4-4s. Four Notice he's now got most of his checkers in the inner board, and within a turn or two, he's going to be able to start bearing off. Okay, White now rolls a 6-1, and since he needs 1s to enter, that's a pretty good shot. He can bring in one of his checkers from the bar. Unfortunately, he still has one left there, so he still can't move any checkers until that very last checker gets in off the bar. Black rolls a 5-4, and that's a good roll for him. His goal now is to get these last two black checkers on the outside into his inner board so that he can start to bear off. And this is perfect for that. With the 5, he's going to play the checker from the 9 down to the 4. With the 7, he'll play the checker, sorry, with the 4, he'll play the checker from the 7 down to the 3. Now both checkers are in the inner board. All his checkers, in fact, are now in the inner board, so next turn he can start to bear man off. Now it's White's turn. Again, White still needs a 1 to get in before he can do anything else. Fortunately, we're rolling a 2-1. He can get in. So he moves the last checker from the bar to the 1 point. And now he can play a 2 if he's got one. And in fact, he does have a deuce left to play. He can pull a checker from the 22 point down to the 24 point. So there's his 2. And now he's going to have to roll 6s in order to get these checkers out of the inner board before he can move anybody 
before he can start to do much of anything else. But at least he's got all his men in off the bar. Now, Black in his turn rolls a 6-5. That's a great shot. He's ready to start bearing off. With a 6, he can take, take a checker off the 6 point. So he does that, and it goes into the bear off tray. And now with a 5, he can remove one of the checkers from the 5 point. So there's two men off. And now remember the game is really a race to see whether black can win a gammon or whether white can save a gammon. White has very few actual winning chances here because even if he hits a shot, it's probably not going to be enough to save the game because black can easily re-enter and get around. But if white can race fast enough, he may be able to save the gammon. Now white rolls a 6-3, and that's a good roll for him because the 6 is enough for him to hop black's 5 points in a row here. He can move from the 1 point to the 7 point with the 6. And then the only way he can play a 3 is to keep that checker going from the 7 up to the 10 point. But still, he started to move his checkers around, which is a first step to saving the gammon. Now, black rolls again. And once again, he rolls a 6-5. And this actually isn't as good for him as the 6-5 was on the previous turn, because look at what happens. With the 6, he's again going to remove a checker from the 6 point. With the 5, well, he's a little stuck because he'd like, he doesn't really want to leave this blot here for white to hit. But notice that that checker can't move 5 pips because, unfortunately, white owns his 1 point. So the only way black can, roll a, can play a 5 is to take yet another checker off the 5 point. So he gets 2 checkers off, but unfortunately he leaves a shot. And if white rolls a 5 next turn, white can hit it, send that checker back. That's not really going to put the game in jeopardy for black, but it could be that that hit would enable white to save a gammon. Now, unfortunately for white, he doesn't roll a 5, which he'd dearly like to do. Instead, he just rolls a 6-1. It enables him to move this checker out. So he plays with the 6, he plays 1 to 7. And then with the 1, it doesn't really matter much which of these checkers he moves. He elects to play from the 7 point to the 8 point. He's got his checkers moving, but he really wanted to hit that shot because that could have been his best chance to gain some time and save the gammon. Okay, now black rolls, and this time black rolls a 5-1, and that's a pretty good shot for him. This time he's going to play the 1 first. He's going to move a checker from the 6 to the 5, making sure that blot is safe, and now he plays his 5 and takes a checker off the 5 point. So that roll enabled him to safety his blot and take a checker off at the same time. Pretty good shot. Okay, white shoots. White rolls a 3-2. Pretty straightforward. He can move one of the checkers in the outer board here. He can't really do anything else. So he elects to play the checker from the 8 to the 13. And right now it looks very much like black is going to win a gammon. Uh, he's going to be able to bear off the rest of his checkers pretty quickly. And unless white hits a shot somewhere toward the very end, white's not going to be able to get these checkers around in time to save the gammon. Okay, and black rolls 4-4. Four, four. That's a pretty good number. It moves a lot of freight. Uh, he starts by taking the three checkers off the four point. Now he has one four left, but unfortunately he can't move again because the checker on the five point can't move four pips because that point four pips away is blocked by white. And black can't remove any checkers on low points until he's gotten all the checkers off the higher points. So he can play three of his fours, but he can't play the last one. Now white rolls a 6-2. That lets him get another checker moving. So with a 6, he goes from the 1 out to the 7. And then with a 2, he keeps that checker going, moves it all the way out to the 9 point. Now things are looking pretty good for black here. And black now rolls a 5-4. Now with the 5, that's a good roll because he can take a checker off the 5 point. So he does that. But notice he can't play the 4. Just like last turn, uh, the only 4 he has left would be a move with a checker on the 5 point. But that's blocked because white owns the point 4 pips away. So that checker has to just sit there. And now when he shoots, white's going to have a chance to roll a 4 and hit the block. 
So White needs a four. Unfortunately, he's been firing blanks for a while, and he keeps on doing it. Uh, this time he rolls a 3-2, which again misses, but he starts to keep his last back, back man moving. He moves the 3 from the 1 to the 4, and then he keeps that checker going out to the 6. He's got to worry a little bit about losing a backgammon in this position, which happens when your opponent bears off all his checkers and you still have men stuck in his inner board. So the gammon is pretty much lost for White here, but White's trying to make sure he doesn't compound the problem and actually lose a backgammon. So black shoots. Black rolls a 6-4, and that's a great shot. With the 6, he's going to take a checker off the 5 point. And now with the 4, he can take a checker off the highest remaining point, which is the 3 point. So he does that. He's down to 4 checkers left. And if he could roll a double on his last shot and White still had a checker in his inner board, Black would actually win a backgammon. Now at this point, White really just wants to get these last two checkers out of Black's inner board, save the backgammon, and be done with this game. So he's ro hoping to roll big numbers, and he shoots, and he rolls 6-1, which is actually just big enough. With a 6, he plays a checker from the 1 to the 7. With the 1, he plays a checker from the 6 to the 7. Now he's at least gotten out of Black's inner board, so he's saved the backgammon. He's going to lose a gammon. Uh, which is not good, but it's better than losing a, a triple game, which is a backgammon. And now it's Black's turn. He shoots, and he rolls 3-3, three, three, which enables him to play four threes, and that's just enough to get all the rest of his men off. With the first three, he takes a checker off the three-point. The second three takes the other checker off the three-point. And now with the last two threes, he can take men off the two-point. That's the highest remaining point. So he takes them off. He's borne off all 15 checkers. And notice that white has not borne off a checker yet, so black wins a gammon, which is double the stake, and that means he wins four points instead of just two. So that's it, our first real game. And we covered a lot of material in this episode, so let's just go back briefly and review it. We saw how black's aggressive opening play gave him good chances to build a blockade quickly, while unfortunately white's ultra-safe plays left him with very few good options later. So Black was able to establish a priming position fairly quickly, while White could never restrain Black's men at all. Black offered to double the stakes at a perfect time when he'd built a solid advantage, but before his advantage became so overwhelming that White had an easy pass. Eventually, Black's prime kept White bottled up for so long that in the end he wasn't even able to save the gammon, and Black was able to win four points. Now, if you're learning backgammon for the first time, go back and play through this game again, and you'll see that you'll pick up a few things on the second pass that you might have missed the first time around. And remember, for online backgammon, you can try the site Black Chip Poker, which is part of the Merge Network. They accept American players, and you can sign up through the My Account page here on Drag the Bar. And by the way, don't forget to sign up for Rakeback when you join. Now, next time, we'll take a look at how to play the opening moves. I'll go over the different types of moves, show you what the choices are, and explain how you can use the opening move to start to orient your game for either offense or defense. Until then, this is Bill Roberti signing off for Drag the Bar.